all yours, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Want a grip? There you are. Not up. Thank you. They'll be back. They always come back. How does it feel to be back on a horse again? I'll never forget that little pony you were on the first time I saw you. <laughs> that had to be the worst spavin, spilling leg little old hammerhead mustang I ever saw in my life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you didn't look much better yourself. You remember you wearing suspenders because you didn't have enough weight around your rear end to keep your pants up? How old were you? 16, 17? 15. And always laughing. No matter how bad things got, you always saw the funny side of it. Because I was a kid, and kids laugh a lot. But when you grow up, you realize that there ain't nothing to laugh about. And you grow up fast in prison. But you're something you wouldn't know anything about. Oh, wouldn't I? Hey, Griff. We'll be in Whipstock in about an hour. Get you some fresh clothes. Something that'll fit. Grip. Try these on. Huh? What size boots, sir? Eleven. Yeah. Anything we missed? There's no gun. Where do I change? Room right back here, sir. Yeah, there is something else. I forgot to have my prison number painted on the back of the shirt. I did everything you told me to. Everything? Well, almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Griff King. He's going to be working with us. This is my son, Jamie. How you doing, Griff? Jamie. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm... Hmm. Is this uh, the homework you've been doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you could call it a lesson in uh, modern history. Better get started on my homework. <laughs> yes, I think you'd better. <laughs> oh, nice meeting you, Griff.
This is the classiest prison I've ever been in. <clears throat> Look, Griff. This is a working ranch. My home. For you, it's an opportunity. A chance. A new start. Whatever you want to make it. I just want to leave. Why? Because according to the terms of my parole, that's the one thing that I can't do. And when somebody tells me I can't do something, that's the one thing I want to do. Well, I certainly think you ought to do whatever you want to do. You want to stay? Stay. You want to leave? Get on that horseman right out. And if they caught me, they'd put me back in that prison for 20 years. Yeah, that's right. You want to make up your mind? You want to put your name in the pay book? I stay. Right. Let's hear no more talk about prisons. Griff, what do you think of the place? It's all right. Uh, I talked to Luke. He has six he wants to try to break tomorrow. Oh, good. Oh, Candy, will you show Griff where to bed down? Yeah, sure. Come on, we'll find a place for you in the bunkhouse. How much do these clothes cost? Eight dollars and sixty-three cents. Take it out of my first month's pay. I've already put it in the book. You two are really hitting it off. Well, at least he says what's on his mind. Whether you like it or not. If you sure know how to make things tough for yourself. Yeah. What's the matter with you, anyway? Think Cartwright went way out on a limb to do you a favor and you act like he's... Well, did I ask him to? People like him, you don't have to ask. A favor is something you ask for. No, not always. If my motto is if you need a helping hand, you're going to find it right at the end of your own wrist. No. A man has got to shape his own life, Candy. And every time I turn around, somebody else is telling me where I'm going to go and what I'm going to be. If they'd given you the choice, you would have turned down the parole. Is that it? I didn't say that, but nobody asked me. All right, okay, okay. You, you wanted a chance to say yes. That's it. You want to make up your own mind about where you go and what you do. That's it. Well, Griff, if you make up your mind to you stay here, you're going to behave yourself. And you're going to work. Because if you don't, if you cause any trouble for Ben Cartwright, it's not going to be just the law that's looking for you. I thought you were going to show me where to bed down. I am. Come on. Griff. Hi, how are you? Hey, Give me a bunk over here, Griff. See you in the morning. Hey, how you doing? Well, it ain't much, but it's home. I'm Shorty. Can I give you a hand? I think I can handle it. Griff, what's that stand for? Griff? How do you spell that? Just like it sounds. Ah, uh, this is Tulsa and Lucas. It don't sound like any name I ever heard. Uh, what do they call you, boy? Well, they call me the Duke of Edinburgh, but since we're all such good friends, you can just call me Sire. What's this, then to go to meeting? Now, you just keep your hands off of my things, huh? Where do they throw the trash? We got some boxes out behind the main house. You know, Lucas, uh, he just don't strike me as being friendly. You notice that? Probably got no sense of humor either. Well, we'll find out about that soon enough. <laughs> <laughs>
question now. Who did it? Who's the funny man who cut the ropes on the bunk? I asked a question. Who did it? What are you doing? All right, I did it. Come on, this is it. You are. What are you doing? They cut the ropes on my bunk. They do that to every new man that comes they in don't here. Do it it's, to a, me, no. it's a joke. Chris, it's no a joke. joke where I come from. Everything is a matter of life and death. Yeah, if you're someplace else now. Well, this isn't a lot of prison. I'm not a guard. These men are not your enemies. They was laughing at me. No, they were laughing at the joke. Griff, if I'd have been here, I'd have been laughing. I remember the time you'd have been laughing. You remember? All right? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. All right, fellas, come on back in. Just having a little fun, can't right, It takes two to fight, Lucas. He's the one that started it. I don't care who started it. It's late. We got a big day tomorrow. With the lights out and everybody in bed in five minutes. Lucas. It was my fault. Lucas, I'm sorry. Ready for lights out? Just wait a minute. I want to put these uh, ropes back. Here. It's your last chance, boy. Well, oh, wait a minute. Going? Wait a minute. Going? You and Leo right at Salt Creek make a rough tally of the herd. All right. That. Uh, Hal, Andy, start moving to Ramuda up that little canyon by the creek. Right, Candy. Also, Shorty, you're going to be working the Three Finger Canyon. Start moving the strays down toward the main herd. Right? Oh, no. Anyway, it's so hot up there, Candy. It's going to be hot where I am, too, buddy. Oh, Lucas, uh, you're going to have to saddle up your horse. You're going to be working <coughs> with me and Joe today. Griff. What do you want me to do? I'll check with the boss, see where he wants you to work. Ben, anything particular you want Griff to do today? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of logs back at the house. Chop them up, stack them in cords. You'll find an axe and a saw in the tool house. Uh, wait a minute. That, that's chores, Mr. Cartwright. I put in my time doing chores. I can ride, I can handle a rope. I worked as a top hand on a ranch once. 
Well, then you ought to know that the new man gets the dirty jobs, and you're the new man. Look, my being here is your idea. The warden's. All I'm asking for is a chance to prove I can do the job. Can you chop wood? I can chop wood. Fine. Let's see if you can do that job. But I don't like it. Neither does anybody else. But it has to be done. Uh, yeah, I just wondered, maybe, maybe Griff could uh, give Candy and I a hand today. Uh, then if it doesn't work out, he can always chop the wood tomorrow. Yeah, that might be a dynamite idea. Dynamite's exactly the word I had in mind, dynamite. Yeah. these horses who's the boss boy you know the master you can't let them know that they're tougher than you are i'll show you what i mean get him going for a minute there what's the name of that ugly beast alice Alice, I can't wait to get the dynamite. Good boy, Joe. Good ride. Oh. Well, Griff, you ready to ride that next horse? Say hello? Well, among other things. I'm also here on business. Uh, we uh, had a store robbed in Virginia City last night. So? Well, I wanted to ask you some questions. Oh, you, you think I did it? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I want to ask you about this new man you've got working out here. King, Griff King. What about him? Suppose you tell me. Well, let's not play cat and mouse. You got something on your mind, you just say it. All right. Man gets out of prison. Moves near Virginia City. First thing the store gets robbed. What's that got to do with him? Hey, just a minute, man. Whoever robbed that store took a pistol, rifle, cartridges for each, blanket, uh, slicker, canned food. Uh, sounds like somebody's putting together a traveling kit. That's what it sounds like to me. How'd you hear about it, Griff? I got a letter from the prison 
They felt it was important that the proper authorities be notified. Why didn't you tell me you had an ex-convict working out here, Ben? We got here a couple of days ago. Paroled in my care. I didn't think there was any rush about it. I see. Well, maybe you don't know these people as well as I do. I want to talk to them. Okay. I'll go with you. you stay right out here. I'll bring them out. If you don't mind. Foster, I want to ask you a couple questions. What about? You mind coming down here, boy? Some people call me Griff, and others call me Mr. King. And those are the only two names that I answer to. Mr. King. We had a store robbed in Virginia City last night. You know anything about it? Yeah, I know the store was robbed. How'd you know that? Because you just told me. And I don't think lawmen lie, do they? Where were you last night? Did you sleep in his bunk? No. Nope. Slept out in the woods. Any witnesses? Come on, boy, you come with me. Oh, wait, easy, easy. Now. Come on. Mm. You went to jail as long as Mr. King has been in jail. You'd probably want to sleep in the woods, too, wouldn't you? He's got no witnesses, Ben. Do you? As far as the law is concerned, he's presumed to be innocent until you can prove him guilty. Isn't that right? Where's your gear? I'm wearing it. Where's your bunk? It's the last one on the right as you go in the door. You can't miss it. It's the one on the floor. No, you're wrong. I didn't tell him about you. You got a letter from the warden. What do I have to do? Live my whole life in the middle of a crowd so the next time somebody's robbed, I got a witness? Nobody said it was going to be easy. What do you have to do to get people to trust you? Well, maybe you can start by trusting them. something, Clem? Yep, an alibi. Tell him. Well, uh, I had a little excitement in the bunkhouse last night, and uh, I couldn't get to sleep, so uh, I went for a walk, and I saw a Griff there out sleeping under a tree. What time was that? I didn't look at a watch, but it was sometime between one and two. Tulsa saw me leave the bunkhouse. He could tell you what time it was. That's about the time the store was robbed. Well, well, thank you, Lucas. Yes, thanks. Satisfied? I gotta go find me a burglar. How long have you known Lucas? Well, ever since he started working here, why? I, I just wondered. Tell the truth. Yeah, well, I just want you to know I appreciate it. Well, why don't you just go appreciate it someplace else? What you reading, Tulsa? Book.
Lost again. Zach, can I play the winner in this game? I got the winner. How about the winner of this game? Tulsa got the winner of that game. Ain't that right, Tulsa? That's right. What about the winner of that game? All right. I tell you how much I've enjoyed this evening. What a pleasure it is being here and how I'm warmed by your friendship. Jenna, before I can have a book, you're out. Yeah. To show you my appreciation, I am going to shut up. Thank you for your kind attention. That ladder go fixed yet? I'll get it. You want me to fix it for you? Go ahead. Saddlemaker once. Hey Griff, uh, there's not a bad bunch of guys in here. Just don't try so hard. Give them time. They let you off the hook. They even let you breathe, maybe. Uh, fellas, I, uh, I need a volunteer. Ride up to the line shack at Seminole Canyon. Take up some supplies and get the shack ready for winter. Hmm? Well, I'll do it. I wasn't going into town today anyway. Oh, well, I appreciate that very much, Griff, but uh, I don't think you know this country well enough yet to... Well, you can just tell me how to get there. Not quite as simple as that, but thank you anyway. I'll go, Miss Cartwright. Thank you, Lucas. I guess I owe you another day off, huh? All right, fellas. The rest of the day is your own. All right. All right. All right. Hey. Find the supplies in the cookhouse. Thank you again, Lucas. Yeah. 
Would you like to go into town? I don't think so. I'll give you an advance on your pay. I already owe you $8.63. I trust you. Not enough to let me go ride enough to Seminole Canyon by myself. Jump. Care for another game? You know, you're really not a bad checker player. It's just that I'm so much better. Because I really had a lot of time to polish my game. Is it the Seminole Canyon? Oh, I think 12 miles up the north of the trail. You probably won't get there till after dark. Yeah, I was supposed to go into town tonight, but I guess I won't make it. Anything important? Ah, no. Just a package for me at Wells Fargo. I was supposed to pick it up on my day off. I might be going into town tonight. Just take a look around. Hey, Griff. Need a couple of dollars for payday? No, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Come on. Oh, take hey. I'm on Okay. You want me to pick up that package for you? Yeah. I appreciate it. Fargo off and close it around eight. to come inside. I, uh, I gotta run an errand. Well, then hurry back. Five minutes? And you won't go away? Well, uh, what's your name? Amy. I'm Grip.
and we're going to get a few things straightened out. Turn around. Turn around. I didn't rob no Wells Fargo office. I went in. Somebody hit me from behind. There was a shot. The lights went out and somebody ran out the back door. By the time I got to my feet and out the front door, you were running at me with a pistol in your hand. And you just happened to come along while somebody was robbing it, huh? No, I didn't just happen to wander in. Somebody sent me there to pick up a package that probably doesn't exist. Who? The same man who lied when he said he saw me sleeping under the tree the night that store was robbed. Why didn't you tell us then that he was lying? Because he would have put me in jail. Why would Lucas lie to give you an alibi? Not to give me an alibi, to give him an alibi. And don't you see, if he said he saw me sleeping under that tree, that means he had to be there too, about the same time the store was being robbed. But Lucas didn't need an alibi. All he had to do was let me throw you in jail. Oh, he didn't want me in jail. Not then. He wanted whatever's missing from that Wells Fargo office. $50,000 paper money. Easy to carry, easy to hide. And somebody just like me to take the blame. You could have a talk with Lucas. He's up in Seminole Canyon. No, he's not. I went and got him last night. He's right in here. I'm glad to see you. I thought he was going to kill me. Why'd you lie to me, Lucas? Oh, you, uh, you mean about seeing him that night? That's what I mean. Well, he was one of the guys in the bunkhouse. I just didn't want to see him get in any trouble. Now, I didn't think he'd do anything like that. Well, I, I know I shouldn't have done it, but... Griff says he asked you to pick up a package for him at Wells Fargo. Is that true? Yeah. Well, it's been there over a week. I was going to pick it up on my day off. You can check that out. Ask him. Well, Griff? Well, what? What do you want me to do? Say I did it? I didn't do it! Then I'll give you all the help you need in proving it. I'll get you the best lawyer in Virginia City. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to save you a lot of money. I'm going to get on a horse and ride right out of here. You do that, Griff. And you keep on riding for the rest of your life. If I don't do that, he's going to put me in prison for the rest of my life. You'd better believe that, boy. Now, you see what I mean? Now, get into that cell. Slick. Why don't you just take your two dollars back? I ain't gonna be here on payday.
enough, Candy. Now turn that horse around and get on out of here. You ain't gonna use that gun anymore, and I'm gonna use this. Candy, come on. What did you do to Ben Cartwright? <sighs> Nothing. And I didn't rob that Wells Fargo office. Then why are you running away, Griff? Because nobody listens to an ex-con. I listen to you. Ben Cartwright will listen to you. They'll all listen to you if you go back there and talk. Yeah, is that what you're taking me back there for? To talk? More talk? I'm not taking you anyways. You go anywhere you like. Listen to me! Here, take this and go to Mexico. Go to China. Go to hell. I know this could have waited till morning, but I wouldn't have slept very well just thinking about it. Came in and I want you to see it as soon as possible, Ben. Lucas, too. I know, don't say a word. I, I've already said it all to myself. now. Well, you'd be happy to know we got the man. New pistol, new rifle. He even got himself a new horse. That stuff that was stolen from the store. Two saddlebags full of money, $50,000 worth. I told you, I told you I didn't do it. That's right, you told us. You told us all along it was Lucas. Damn well, it wasn't me. Uh, <clears throat> Griff, uh, why don't you get yourself some good rest? Because hmm? tomorrow, you're going to be working all day, chopping wood. Well, you got yourself a deal. <laughs> Oh, you cost me a lot of money. You know that. What do you mean? I bet cost a month's wages. You did it. If you get any more bets like that, you let me know. Yeah, well, he had, but it was weak wages. It's all right. I'll win it back for you playing checkers. Oh, you couldn't win with a winning stick. What was in that package? Oh, my mom over in Tucson sent me a birthday cake. Well, when was your birthday? Oh, about six weeks ago. Don't you think it's kind of stale? Well, it's a thought that counts, ain't it? Thank <laughs> you. 
Virginia City, folks. Right on schedule. Right, next time, I just soon be late. Well, I'm sorry if the ride was a little bit rough on you. Nah, I'm sure you are. Well, I wouldn't say it if I didn't mean it. <laughs> Let's get them bags out here, sir. You got a package for me, Charlie? Oh, honey, no, I can't say as I do, Joe. Supposed to be on at 2 o'clock. Where, from San Francisco? Yeah. Oh, well, that's it, then. I mean, we missed our connections at 3 4. It'll be on at 6 o'clock, though. Sure, it's gonna be on at 6 o'clock. Oh, yeah, gotta be. Because if it ain't, won't be here till tomorrow. Well, think of that old Charlie. You can always depend on him to give you a straight answer. Yeah, pardon me. Could you tell me where the Virginia City Hotel is? Oh, yeah, it's right up near the street. You can't miss it. Thank you. Okay. Well, you got four hot hours to kill. Come on, I'll buy you beer. Sounds good to me. Feel better? Yes, the bath was fine. You're all dressed. Are you going out? Yeah, I thought I'd uh, look around town for a bit. Is there something wrong with that? I've been cooped up in that stage for a week. I just want to get out for a while. <laughs> I just asked if you were going out. Well, I am. Why are you taking the money with you? Look, we've been through all this before. I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I'm just going to take it down to the bank. It'd be a lot safer there than letting it hang around here, don't you think? All right, then. Stop worrying. We came out here to get a fresh start. Everything's in the past. I've changed. <laughs> You've got to change, too. You've got to trust me. back soon. And if you're a good girl, I'll bring you back a surprise. for the dealer. Gentlemen, the price of poker just went up to five hundred dollars. You rich for me. I'm still in. Last card. Three nines, about a thousand.
I'll see you. Raise you fourteen hundred. Could just be that you have a third jack facing the table. There's only one way to find out. You're right. But it uh, doesn't really matter. But you see, I have the fourth nine. Your deal, Mr. Harper. Um, that's. All the money I have with me, I'll have to make out a marker for no markers, Mr. Harper. We play for cash. You have to give me a chance to break even. Harper, I don't have to give you anything. Deal passes to you, old timer. No. All right, leave him alone. Stay out of this. Look, you stuck it on him once. That's enough. Uh. Uh. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you lying there. Hey, you all right? Come on, man. Yeah. Jody, don't tell. Take it easy on me. I just said this was his room. Bring him in. You can put him in there. Just take it easy. Yeah, there was a fight. He didn't get hurt real bad. He just needs to sleep it off. I know. He drinks more than he fights. I see you managed to get all of his money. What? I should thank you. You're the first one who ever bothered to bring him home. Or did you think there might be a little something left? If you thought that you're wrong, there's nothing left. There never is. Look, lady, I didn't come here to find out about any money, and I didn't take the money he had with him. He got in a card game he shouldn't have. I just brought him home, that's all. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing him home. No need, I guess we both lost our tempers. I didn't have any right to bite your head off either. Friends? Friends. Uh, Doc Martin's a good man if your husband's hurting when he wakes up. He's my brother. Oh. Doc's the best in town. I'll remember that. Thank you, Mr. Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. Alice Harper. I guess I better be going. Bye. Goodbye. down to the trees, planting some more dynamite. Ah, oh. well, I'll look in on him. I'll be back to give you a hand. All right, we'll be there. How's it going, Joe? Yeah, we're going pretty good so far. Got all the easy stuff out of the way. A lot of heavy stuff to clear the rest of the way down. Uh, we're gonna need some more dynamite pretty soon. Uh, uh, this letter came for you. Oh, thanks. I'll send one to town for it. You know, you ought to have to go deeper with that charges. I'll be darned. That's yeah, about 18 inches deeper, and that probably have to double the charge, too. No reason to go and do that. Oh, well, yes, there is. They're going to move this stump out of here. Joe? Joseph? Hmm? I was saying you're going to have a problem moving this stump out of here. No, no, I won't have any problem. I'll deepen it about 18 inches and double the charges. I want to bring an idea. I'll have Will bring the dynamite out of here as quick as he can make it. Uh, no, I'll, I'll do it. I'll get it. I want to make sure it's right. Oh. You suit yourself. See you at supper. See you at supper.
May I help you? Hmm? I said, may I help you? Uh, yeah, thank you. I'd uh, like to buy just a little present for a friend. A very close friend, I take it. Oh, no, no. So what, what I want is something more like a, a hat. I'd like to buy a hat. I see. Uh, Miss Harper will help you. She's in charge of the hat department. Thank you. The hat department is over here. Oh. Yes. Excuse me. Miss Harper will be right with you. Thank you. Pleasure to see you. It's nice to see you. I want to thank you for your thank you note. Oh, well, it was the least I could do. My brother told me everything that happened. Well, I understand that you want to buy a hat. We just have a new shipment in from St. Louis. I love this one. I think it's really lovely. What do you think? Yeah, what's nice, I, well, I, I don't know too much about hats. I know what you mean. It's not the easiest thing to pick out for a woman. Without her trying it on, I mean. Well, perhaps you'd like to consider something else for Mrs. Cartwright. A shawl? There is no Mrs. Cartwright. Oh, well. I, say, I really didn't want to buy anything. I, uh, I just came in to thank you for the thank you note and ask you if you'd have dinner with me tonight. I'd like that. How's eight o'clock? Eight's fine. I'll see you at eight. See you at eight. Funny little sister, I thought I was late. <laughs> I lost the key. <laughs> you look very nice. You, you always look very nice. John, you told me you were going to look for a job. Well, I lied. But I always do, don't I? You always look very nice, and I always lie. And I always forgive you. I can't, John. I can't take care of you anymore. I'm sorry. I had a few drinks, but I'll get a job tomorrow. I promise. I don't care what you do tomorrow. I want you out of here tonight. I'm not going to be like Mother John. I'm not going to spend my life making excuses for you. And die listening to your promises. I'm moving into a single room in the morning. I expect you to be gone by then. Hi. Ready? Goodbye, John. I guess I wasn't hungry. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I... I shouldn't have come over to the store. I, I kind of put you on the spot when I asked you to go out with me. I oh, know. No, I'm... I'm glad you did. I wanted... It has nothing to do with you. You sure? I'm sure. It has nothing to do with me, and you really wanted to go out with me. Then why are you messing up my evening? I mean, really. You know, it took an awful lot of nerve for me to go in that store with all those women and ask you to go out with me. They're all looking at me. What's so funny? I don't know. You just made me laugh. Well, I'd rather... Not know why you're laughing, then I know why you're crying. 
All right, then we go. Where do we go? Well, there's only one place that a man takes a woman on a night like this. Where's that? To the bar. <laughs> I don't believe that. Well, it's true. I crossed my heart when Annie was a kid. He ate bugs. All kinds of bugs. Certainly didn't hurt his fiddle playing any. Well, it never hurt anything Annie ever did. I remember when we were kids, we'd sit around and watch him eat these bugs, you know, and bees. He couldn't get enough of bees. No, really, we'd sit around and watch him eat these bugs and figure he was going to die, you know. When he got a little bit older, he could run faster and jump farther than anybody else in Virginia City. They would all sit around and figure we should have eaten bugs when we were little. I don't know. I really don't know when to believe you. They can always believe me. I may not always be telling the truth, but you can always believe me. Thank you. I had a wonderful time. Yeah, same here. Look, I'll um, walk you up to your room if you want. No, thank you. I'm fine. Okay. Thank you again. I really had a good time. Well, it was, it was my pleasure. Good night. Uh, uh, can I see you again? Yes. It's tomorrow too soon. No. What time to get off work? I'm off tomorrow. It's Sunday. Oh, I forgot. All right, well, let me uh, let me pick you up early. Say two o'clock. Fine. I'll, I'll see you too then. Did you have a good time? Now don't worry. I'm all packed. I'm going to Carson City. I just want to say goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sorry. I told you, John, it's not going to work this time. That's not why I'm saying this. I know that I've made a mess of my life so far. I've hurt.
hurt a lot of people. And your right to send me away, it is for my own good. And if I ever want to make it, it'll have to be on my own. Be happy. You're really happy you took me for a ride today. I've done nothing but tell you my troubles. <laughs> don't be silly. You didn't hear me complain, did you? Well, I don't think I've been quiet long enough to give you a chance. I'm a good listener. Right. Anyway, no more. Joe Cartwright, I promise I will not spoil your day. Alice Harper, the only thing that could spoil my day would be not having you with me. Beautiful. That's my favorite place. <laughs> Brother Hoss and I used to come here when we were kids. We don't do anything special. We just sit and look at it. We used to call it our happy place. You really loved him, didn't you? I think everybody did. He was that kind of guy. Do you know I spent my whole life in the city dreaming of a place like this? Somewhere quiet, clean. I'm glad you didn't stay in the city. Some, uh, some stew in the kitchen. No, thanks. We had dinner in town. Dinner? Uh, dinner? Two nights in a row? Sounds like he's getting serious. Uh -huh. Well, I better be serious. I'm gonna ask that girl to marry me. See you in the morning.
horse, will you? Hold your horses, will you, Joe? I never seen anything like you. You ain't getting married for four more weeks. You're running around here like it's tomorrow afternoon. I just want to get the house ready on time, if you don't mind. But if you get it finished too soon, you ain't going to have anything to do but sit around and get panicky. Well, for your information, I'm not even nervous. Oh, yeah? Then how come you're nailing your fingers to the roof? <laughs> Yo, you keep your mind on your work and never mind the jokes, little brother. <laughs> hey, it looks like you got company. You keep working. Hey, Joe, don't take too long now. I want to make sure this place gets ready on time. You just keep working like I told you. They'll be all right, those two. Yes, sir, they're going to be all right. Hey, Jack, I buy another one. You're getting down kind of early, ain't you, Mr. Hopper? Celebrate, Jack. Celebrate. My sister's getting married today over in Virginia City. How come you didn't make the wedding? <laughs> I guess I just wasn't up to it. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, size, why spoil her day? You know what I told her I was uh, doing? I wrote her that I was working on a big land deal and I couldn't get away. Dear little sister, I told you I'd make it on my own, and I have. I'm at work on a big land deal, and I'm sorry, but I just can't make the wedding. Congratulations. Oh, come on. Victoria. Hi, Jessica. Hey, Jamie, give me a hand with this tie, will you? I just can't get this darn thing tied. I thought you said you weren't nervous. Well, I lied. Just see if you can get it tied up. Huh? All right. Far ready yet? Only since sunrise. Hey, what, what time is it? Well, Joseph, it's a, it's time. It's time. All right, let's go.
are gathered here today to bring these two people together in holy matrimony. A whole new life will begin for the two of you today. A life of sharing not just the joys, but the sorrows too. It won't always be easy. Life never is. You have to work at it and work hard. But you will find that there is great strength in love. Do you, Alice Harper, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband, to love, honor, and cherish, till death do you part? I do. And do you, Joe Cartwright, take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to love, honor, and cherish, till death do you part? I do. After me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder.
shows. Come on, it's late. I've been here since 8 o'clock this morning. So have I. Well, that's your problem, not mine. Now, let's go. How true. How very true. It is my problem. And I must work it out on my own. You know, it's getting late. No, I'm almost done. Your pa said supper at six. You've been late the last three times. Well, whose fault is that? Never you mind. You just get a move on, okay? you were worried about being late. I've been waiting for you to button me up. Buttons. The buttons. Oh, right. Is this an address? Oh, typical husband you are. You've only seen me in it ten times. Well, it's so darn tight I can hardly hook it up. Really? Mm-hmm. This material shrinks sometimes. Well, I must say tight or not, she looked very lovely. Joe. Joe, hook up the buggy. Yeah. Yes, yeah, get the buggy ready, Joe. Mr. Harper, we've been waiting for you. Mr. Damien wants his money. I'll have it in a few days. I told you. Mr. Damien's getting impatient. Now we're asking nice this time. 48 hours from now, we won't be asking so nice. You understand? 48 hours, Mr. Harper. I understand. Unless I have to. I swear you worked harder the last few months you've been married than all the years you worked at Ponderosa. That's because I don't have candy there holding me back all the time. And I'll remember that next time you need some help or something. <laughs> we passed Alice on the road away back. Why don't you come home for lunch? I should pack my lunch. She said it was important. Oh, she's fixing you something special. You're a married man now. You got to do what your wife tells you. Yeah. Now, for your information, I was going to quit after I finished taking this hole anyway. Sure. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Go on, Jim. Take care, Bob.
gonna we're gonna have to add that room on a little sooner than we thought. Are you kidding me? I'll have it built in half an hour. I just, I can't I can't believe it, a baby. Are, are you all right? You feel all right? I'm fine. Are you sure? Uh huh. Really, I'm I'm sure. Now come on, eat something. Oh, I couldn't eat. I couldn't eat if I was starving to death. I just can't believe it, a baby. I gotta tell Paul. Hey, maybe, maybe I can catch him before he gets home. more than he fights. I see you managed to get all of his money. Look, lady, I hadn't come here to find out about any money, and I didn't take the money he had with him. He got in a card game he shouldn't have. I just brought him home, that's all. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing him home. Friends? Friends? My favorite place. Brother Hoss and I used to come here when we were kids. We didn't do anything special. We just sit and look at it. We used to call it our happy place. You really loved him, didn't you?
Nice night for a walk, isn't it, John? Isn't it, John? You disappoint me, John. You really do. I trusted you. You owe me money, a great deal of money. You promised to pay me, and you haven't. Da Damien, I will pay you. I just need a few more days. I told you. I know what you told me. You told me you had a bank draft coming in from St. Louis. Yes, yes, I do. And it'll be here in just a few days. There is no bank draft, is there, John? Yes, there. I swear there is. Lying is a sin, John. A man must pay for his sins. Hadley? No, 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 please, please. I, I, please. All right. All right. I lied. I'm sorry. I was scared. I thought that my luck would change, that I could win some of the money back. I let you play on credit, and you've never really meant to pay me. It's not true. I will pay you. I'll get the money somewhere. Where? I don't know. That's not good enough. Anyway. No, wait, wait. My sister, she's got the money. She got married three, four months ago to a fellow that's got plenty. She'll give it to me. Five thousand is a lot of money. Her husband's got it. His father owns a big spread. His name's Cartwright. Believe me, he's got plenty of money. I suppose you wonder what I'm doing. Okay, well, I'm going to tell you anyway. I was, see, I was putting the cradle in different places around the room to see where the baby would get a lot of sun and have a nice view at the same time. Uh, well, um, why don't you put it right in the center? See, then the baby can look straight up. Because if you keep pulling around with the cradle, this room is never going to get a roof on it. Is it big enough? The room? The room, yeah, it's a big one. Plenty big. I can make it a lot bigger. No. I think it's perfect. Suppose you have twin. Would you not say that? <laughs> I'm going to have plenty of trouble just taking care of one at a time. Thank you. Very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Very much. I mean, two years and these wouldn't be too bad, though, would it? We're going to have as many use and me's as you want. Okay? Right now, I think we ought to get the first room finished. Finished. All right. I'm going to go over to the and get some more lumber. Say hello for me. Will do. See if the family wants to have supper with us. We've got plenty. I will. I love you. Get some good supper. No point in rushing it. You gotta let Hobson get that pie finished. You know how he's gonna feel if we go off and leave it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Say, hey, uh, what's it uh, feel like knowing you're gonna be a papa? I tell you, he gets nervous, can't sleep at night. Well, let baby's born. He's never gonna let you sleep. <laughs> I don't think you understand how serious this situation really is. I understand exactly how serious it is for you. I hardly think you're in any position to threaten me. Not if you care about your brother. He really has some very fine qualities, you know. I would advise you to leave my brother right here and take your friends and go. My husband and his family will be here any minute, and I don't think they'll take too kindly to your being here. What a shame. I had hoped we could be such good friends. Look what I found.
This is lovely, Mrs. Cartwright. A gift from your husband. The stones look quite good. I don't know if it covers the full amount owed to me. But it's better than nothing. Give me back the box. Get out of my house. Give me back the box. Get out of my house. I'll only ask you one more time, and then I'll have to let Mr. Hadley take it from you. Don't touch it! <laughs> started, Clemmer. Could have been the stove. More than likely was. Uh, I never did see a fire burn any hotter than this one. Sheriff, take a look over here. Like another body, what's left of one. I wonder who it is. Yeah, there's no way to tell. You better wrap it up and put it in the wagon with with the woman, then head back to town. We know, O oh God, that you will welcome Alice Cartwright to your kingdom with open arms. And we pray that with that knowledge, her husband and her loved ones will find comfort. Help them, O oh Lord, to forget this tragedy and to remember only the beauty and the love that was Alice Cartwright. Amen.
Good to see you. Always welcome to our house. It's getting kind of late. I was just wondering where you were. Always worrying. No, I, I wasn't worried. No, oh, come on now, come on. You were worrying. Well, there's nothing to worry about you. Heard the preacher today. He said, Alice is in heaven and you think about the good times. and mine and our babies. I, ne I never got the baby's room finished, you know. I thought it was too sp small, but I told Alice I could make it bigger. It was plenty big. hear from you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I'm wearing just gonna keep moving. Just need a little time. I know. Take care. Yeah, well.
We have a beer with. Did you settle for whiskey? Beer went skunky on me. Yeah, whiskey be fine. <sighs> Looks like you've been on the trail for a while. Yeah, I don't mind. Well, that little every stable said he had rooms to rent. Oh, sure do. Ain't the greatest, but the beds are sleepable. That's fine. Let's see. Six. End of the hall. That's 25 cents for the room and 50 cents for the whiskey. I'll keep the change. Get it. Sleep good. Where did you get that music box? Listen, mister, you get out of here. Where'd you get it? Where did you get it? It's mine. You get out of here. Now you hold on! Get out of here! He was a little fella. He... He talked real proper, real fancy. What was his name? Damien. Damien, that was it. His last name? I, I don't know. His friends just called him Damien. His friends? What were their names? I... I, I don't know. Hank! Three fellas he had with him, I don't know. One of them was big and mean looking. Never said anything. This this Damien did all the talking. How long ago did they leave? A couple of weeks. They stayed in town for a while gambling. Cleaned everybody out. Mentioned something about working their way to Frisco. I don't know anymore. I swear it. Horses are saddled. 
Joe, let me go with you. No, I want you to ride into town. Tell Clem what happened. Have more of the law in San Francisco. They can notify the jewelry stores to keep an eye out for the necklace. It'll be our only lead if they beat us to Frisco. All right. Kenny and I'll check every little town on the way. Let's go. Better wire your call in Carson City, too. All right. Should I tell him to try to catch up with you? No, not enough time. Just tell him. Tell him we'll get him. Towns for Frisco. Barlow, Thornton. I love you, Mother. It means we're going to have to add that room on a little sooner than we planned to. I said we better get going. Excellent. A pleasant surprise in such plebeian surroundings. I want to get out of this place. It's driving me nuts. There's nothing to do around here. I say when we can go. Well, I wish you'd hurry up and decide. I don't hurry anything! That's what I like about Mr. Hanley here. He doesn't hurry either. He enjoys every moment. Savors it. Like you would a fine wine. You've angered me, Slow. I think you ought to be more like Mr. Hanley. Hanley. Cut out his tongue. Come on, you gotta be joking. I thought you knew me far better than that. Now, wait a minute, I... I didn't mean nothing by that, I'm sorry. Hey, look, I said I was sorry. Look, call him off, will you? Don't call him! Free! You ought to be forgiven! 
Yeah. You kneel when you ask for forgiveness. Come forward. Yes, Sloan. Please, forgive me. was forgiven. to be rested by now. I'll get him saddled up. One dollar a night for two. Extra 50 cents if you want a bath. We don't need a room. We're looking for some men. There's four of them. One's named Damien. Mr. Damien, you friends of his? And he's here? Was here. Wonderful man, real gentleman. How long ago did they leave? Four, maybe five hours ago. Left me a five dollar tip. It's gonna be tough tracking them at night. We'll need torches. We'll need some fresh horses too. Where's the livery? Why are you looking for him? Where's the livery? All the way up the north end of the street. He wouldn't do nothing wrong. I told you, he's a gentleman. Who they could be. Well, that doesn't matter. How far behind us would you say they are? Two, maybe three hours at the pace they're going. It'll be daylight in three hours. Mr. Hanley and I will go on ahead until we find some fresh water. You two stay behind and kill them. I've seen him before. There's one thing for sure. I'm never gonna see him again.
Like your friend over there, you're gonna talk. Oh, I, I don't want no part of this. Look, I, I didn't mean you any harm. I don't even know you. You know my wife. Take yourself. Your wife. My house. My wife. You burned my house. No, that wasn't me. That was Damien and Hanley. They done it. Look, I, I was there, but I, I didn't have nothing to do with it. Damien, he let Hanley kill her. And then they burned her house. That's the truth. Where are they? They rode on ahead to look for water. We're supposed to meet them there. Stay with him. Hanley! I don't like it. I thought they would have been here by now. If anything's gone wrong, those two will still be following us. I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like that at all. Build a fire. We'll be ready if company come. where I can see him. Whatever you're saying. That means you too. I'm afraid that won't do any good. There's no one under that blanket. Mr. Hanley! Did he ride in alone? I could have had Mr. Hanley kill you right away. But I'd like to know why I'm being followed. It makes me very uneasy not knowing why. You 
kill my wife. Why? Oh, yes. Must be carved. Of course. But how did you connect us? We burned all the evidence. Not the music box. Music box. That's right. Now, that was stupid of me, I must admit. But no one's perfect. You see, women happen to be my only vice. Now, you take Mr. Hanley here. He doesn't have that problem. He has a much different way of dealing with women. I'm afraid your wife was an example. Mr. Hanley, give me the rifle. You and Mr. Cartwright have something to settle. You did kill his wife. And since we have no judge or jury here, I think the fairest way is through trial by combat. Let the trial begin, Mr. Hadley. Disappoint me, Code, right? The Bible says an eye for an eye. You should have killed him. You had the right. I'll give you one more chance. So be it. Oh, fuck, what's the lead? 